Are you sure you're not a spy? Um, quite positive. <laughs> quite, quite, quite sure. Unlike Ian, who was sure he was. It's been a great programme for spies, hasn't it? Well, we took uh, Margaret's e- uh, details to HMRC, with her permission, of course, and Margaret emailed us and she said, HMRC's worked out what went wrong. They think because she'd transferred some of her tax allowance to her husband and his details were on a secure database that there was an issue accessing her records. And Margaret says it's not clear, she doesn't know and they don't know why it happens, but she assures us her husband isn't a spy either. Well, listening to that is tax expert Adrian Houston. Adrian, national insurance numbers are are, are your sort of meat and potatoes because you're doing that kind of thing all the time but most of us never took much notice of them until now I mean have you ever heard of someone whose whose national insurance number just didn't exist um, I I've, I've heard of people who for years have been using the wrong national insurance number maybe sometime 10 years ago they transposed two numbers within it and uh, if, if HMRC doesn't spot that then your employer you could give your employer a national insurance number which is actually wrong and you could merrily be employed for years and those national insurance contributions are being deducted from your pay and paid over to HMRC and either allocated to somebody else's record or potentially even allocated to a, a number that doesn't exist. I mean, maybe a number that was never issued or a number that was issued and someone who's died. Um, so I've heard of people using the wrong one. Uh, I haven't heard of them not existing, however... I do know exactly what's going on with this whole spy malarkey. Oh, by Um, the way, I've just had a tweet from Safety Advisor says, Linda, if Margaret really was a spy, she couldn't tell you. So there's a good point. Well, exactly, that's right. I mean, she would continue to deny it. So they're, they're, they're very correct on that point. Um, uh, we actually have a lot of clients uh, who fall into the category of people whose national insurance numbers will be hard to locate um, on the HMRC database because we, and I'm not saying lots of our clients are spies, but there's a special unit set up in the HMRC. They don't really talk about it. Um, and uh, uh, but but it, it's important that we recognise that there are people whose records are held in the special unit, and the purpose of it is that it is secure, and that somebody can't, for example, uh, get the prime minister's name, type that into the HMRC database if they, for instance, worked for HMRC. They can't type it into a database and then find out his national insurance number or find out his address or find out his, the I can understand why return. you wouldn't want someone to know your address and things, but it, what, does your national insurance number, should it be kept a secret? I mean, is it something you, you shouldn't tell anybody? I, I would be inclined to say it's something you shouldn't tell anybody. It's, of course, OK to tell it to a family member who's helping you claim your your shopping voucher or claim some benefits or something, but it wouldn't be something I would share more widely. Issues of... of inappropriate use of national insurance number are not particularly common, but I have encountered them in the practice. I have encountered a client who went to work overseas for for 10 years, and when he came back, um, he discovered that while he was away, someone was claiming benefits using his national insurance number. And that did cause quite a mess, which took a little while to sort out. You see, uh, you just think it's all going on behind the scenes on some big computer. You don't ever think about your your contributions until you go to do maybe a pensions forecast and you're coming up towards 60 or 66 as it is now. You, you you, You expect the money your employer is taking out to go towards your pension. You do, and in most cases it will do. Um, but just just to finish the point on the, this special unit, uh, in terms of Northern Ireland, the sort of people whose tax affairs are in this closed unit where they won't come up on traces and things are people like MLAs, um, former police officers who are getting a pension, current police officers, certain military, certain retired military, MPs, they get that Lords extra, and le- an extra layer of protection. They have an security. extra layer of protection, but it means that if they were to ring an ordinary tax office and say, my tax code's all wrong, here's my national insurance number, these people would say, oh, you I'm don't. sorry, I can't find you. I can't find you. So there is there is that extra layer, which is obviously right for, for, for certain people, but it put an extra layer made of, of obfuscation, I don't often get to say that word on air, for, for, uh, for Margaret. What about the questions about these letters and numbers? Uh, I ask friends and people, what are your first two letters? And they're all different. What do they yeah. signify? I mean, are there Scottish and Welsh and English and Northern Ireland ones? Uh, I don't believe there are, no. Um, the, 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 numbers, the, 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 the numbers are, are basically random, um, with, with one exception. In 1993, 
Uh, normally HMRC issues a national insurance number to someone just before they turn 16. But in a one-off exercise in 1993, they issued national insurance numbers to everyone under 16 for whom their parent was claiming child benefit. And that then meant that if you had three children, your three children would be given national insurance numbers which were sequentially You've one, one after the other. You've answered my question. Exactly. Thank you, Adrian. I asked you that when we were chatting about this on the yeah. phone beforehand and I said to you, my boys have got sequential numbers. I've said it on air before and somebody else said, I'm the same. And then you said, I'm going to go and check my children and yours weren't. Now, exactly. explain me why. Well, you see, my, mine were born in, this, the first was born in December 1993, which then meant that this process that the HMRC had done was finished. And so he got his national insurance number at 16, and so did his brother Patrick. And, and uh, they're completely different numbers, completely different letters and everything. Um, but in 1993, HMRC obviously decided it would be a good idea, rather than just issuing them at 16, they would just do them for every every child they knew of who was under 16. Well, hey, look, here, here's one here, Adrian, just come in by text. We have seven sons. Gosh, I have three and that's enough. <laughs> we have seven sons and the first six national insurance numbers are all following in order and the last letter changes in order, but the seventh one's completely different. Seventh son of a seventh son. And I'll bet you the seventh son was born after the bulk process was issued in 1993. So they were probably born in late 93 or after that. That'll probably be the answer to that specific issue. Isn't Turn, that turning then to national insurance, and, and, and obviously, yes, you do hope that your, your contributions are always being recorded appropriately against your record. But I would urge everybody, really everybody of working age, to have a personal tax account. Now, the people with that special tax office will have, won't be able to do this, but everyone else... They set up a personal tax account. It takes about 10 minutes on the HMRC website. You prove your identity, maybe with a passport or a driving license or We're something. Back to this verification process again yeah, and the importance quite. of the order of the numbers and letters, aren't we? Absolutely. But if you set that up, then on that page, there are, once you set it up, there's ability to check your national insurance record and to check your state pension forecast. So if you've worked for the last 20 years since you left school, and you check your national insurance record, you would hope that the, it'll show you of nine, 20 years of national insurance contributions. If it doesn't, we'll sort it out now. Don't leave it until you're 67 and hoping to get a state pension. So um, everyone should do that. And, and then maybe every four or five years, just dial into their personal tax account, get another state pension forecast and check that their national insurance contributions are still as they would have expected them to be. Are you now, suggesting HMRC doesn't always get it right, Adrian? Are you suggesting well, there are mistakes? Thought, oh, my are you mistakes? Goodness, computers well, might make a mistake. Suggestion. Oh, goodness me. Yeah, a combination of computers and humans, how, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Have they made mistakes in the past? I think you told me they'd lost some at one point. They have. There was one year, I think it was probably in the 2000s, where they lost like two years of national insurance records for everybody. Um, so there was a huge process to try and rebuild that database and obviously somebody in, someone in stable employment throughout, they would just say, well, they were employed there for BT before and they were employed by BT after. We'll assume they paid national insurance with BT in the two intervening years. But for someone who maybe changed jobs during that period, there could be a glitch. So, as I say, check your national insurance record. By the way, if you are in one of these special offices, um, there's, a, there's a helpline for checking your state pension forecast. Um, and you can ring them to say, can you send me a forecast? And you will have that issue of them not able to find you. So you'll have to say, well, now I would point out that... You know, my husband was in the police or I used to be in the army or whatever. We, we've um, had questions, Adrian, from people who live in Northern Ireland and, and, and feel they're entitled to the voucher because they're resident, but they, they work in, in the Republic and they haven't got a national insurance number. Can anybody have one? Um, y yes, uh, anyone who lives in the UK can have a national insurance number. It is pretty much needed to have a job. But there are a few people who are self-employed in the UK who might have slipped through the net. But if you're employed or self-employed in the UK, you're required to have a national insurance number um, or pretty much required to. Your employer really won't want to um, take national insurance off you if they haven't got a reference to which these contributions can be allocated. Um, however, if you live in the UK and work elsewhere, as far as they across the border, um, the problem there is uh, that um, if you if you've no record, you would have to either get a national insurance number or check that you have one. If you were always at 
if you always lived in the UK, you'd have been given one when you were 16. You might just never have used it. Uh, but if, for instance, you were Polish and moved to uh, moved to Straban and then immediately started working across the border, you might never have got a UK national insurance number. But you could apply for one and then you could, for example, pay voluntary national insurance contributions so that you would build up a UK state pension. Adrian, who knew we could be so enthralled with national insurance numbers? I feel like a total nerd and I'm enthralled by it. Thank you so much for doing all that research for us into NINOS, as they're called. <laughs> You've even got the acronym as well. NINOS, and we only are interested in them because everybody wants to spend local vouchers. So, Adrian, thank you very much.